Hello and welcome. We have a really good show. Sit back and... <sighs> what am I doing? I have no idea what I'm going to do for this episode. I, I don't even know what day it is. What am I doing? You know what could really help you sort through these important issues? What? Orange Mocha Frappuccino! Way ahead of you guys. But you guys go ahead. I'll catch up to you. Welcome to my April Fool's episode, where we are going to build Zoomon's GamePod GT2 with Logitech G27 racing wheel. This is a uh, pretty interesting kit. It uh, comes from Zoomon from Hong Kong. We've built some kits on there before. We've got a few more to come. They've got some real interesting subjects. But uh, this is a mix of resin, photo etch, metal pieces, and of course decals. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You uh, basically prime everything. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You clean up the pieces, you prime everything, and glue it all together with uh, CA glue or super glue. And it fits together pretty well. Very straightforward, like I said, and uh, a very good kit overall. These three pieces right here make up your main structure of the uh, gaming chair. The best thing to do is to take the uh, plate steel for the the floor and use it, uh, mock it up underneath and use it as a uh, footprint for where it sits. Careful not to glue it to the pieces. Glue the three resin pieces together and uh, leave a little bit of a gap. Go back with uh, some strip styrene, some thin styrene. I used, uh, I think, 0.8 millimeter by 2.5 thickness uh, width and uh, put that into the the gap that all three pieces made. Then take the uh, photo etch floor and uh, glue it over top once you've painted it and everything. You'll see that as it uh, further in the build. What I did next was go ahead and arrange all the pieces with uh, some tape so that you can spray primer over it with a rattle can and not explode all the pieces everywhere because they're very small pieces. Right now what I did was the photo etch pieces have uh, a layer of protective plastic over the front and back and so I'm cutting around pieces that are going to have a natural finish instead of being painted. Uh, that way it a, forms a natural mask so that I'm gonna cut around the pieces. I'm gonna leave uh, those parts on and then spray my Tamiya surface primer over it. After that, uh, you peel those pieces back and it, it protects the pieces from, from being painted on. But the you wanna prime the photo etch metal to have it so that it accepts paint later on. There's This is textured paint from Zero Paints out of uh, the UK. This is a very pretty color. It's uh, textured paint. It had texture, but it wasn't didn't come out as nice as I wanted it to. I understand if you add baby powder to uh, your paint, you can give it a textured finish, like on some engine heads, some seats, uh, some places that have uh, a textured appearance. After that, I went ahead and sprayed most of the place pieces black or blue to uh, have the desired look at the end. If uh, you Google GamePods GT2 uh, gaming seat, you'll see that they come in blue, red, green, black. Um, I think there's a white out there. I went with a more custom finish. I couldn't really match the blue with the textured paint, and I really like that blue, so I just went with my own color on that and then try to use that for all the other uh, highlighted blue parts. After the paint dried, I went back and peeled off the uh, plastic that came with the original kit and, that I used as a natural mask. And I also taped over what I'd painted blue for the accent pieces because there's some two-tone blue and black pieces as well. So I masked those off with uh, painter's tape and went ahead and sprayed everything black. 
The only thing I would have done differently on this is I probably would have taken the braces off and the uh, the upper piece for the for the steering wheel and folded those up first before painting them, uh, gluing them up into their structures and painting them. As you bend this back, um, a, a visible seam forms on the uh, braces and the all the parts that that you fold back and it's uh, it's quite noticeable you can cover it up with panel line wash like from Tamaya or possibly at home make sure that you can do with uh, dark dark color paints black brown even blue and uh, some some thinner when using cyan acrylate glue or CA glue or super glue the uh, pieces will actually adhere to each other pretty good uh, even after being painted and even with different media like uh, the metal and the resin uh, you don't really have to worry about about them staying together as you would with normal model glues and stuff the trick is to keep your fingers away from it pretty good as I am not doing here uh, because some of the paint will peel off it'll smudge off onto your fingers and then if you're using uh, light colors and stuff then you'll start smudging over the colors. so uh, it's a good idea to plan ahead and make sure you've got your pieces laid out pretty good your plan of action laid out pretty good and make sure you know which order you're uh, gonna be assembling things painting things uh, that's probably one of the most important steps is just to plan ahead. Uh, don't just start clipping pieces off of sprues and start looking in the instructions. There's, there's always going to be a better way for you to assemble if you look and think about how things assemble first. That's uh, probably the biggest tip I, I can do for any, any build. That and be patient. These are uh, just the best tips. This is a relaxing hobby and... You're not you're not out to uh, beat someone in a race. It's it's just you and your imagination. Speaking of my imagination, I have a thing for sticker bomb decals, and so I grabbed this from Zoom On. Uh, since buying this set, they have since come out with something that uh, you'd more see like on a tuner car. Uh, I have that on order right now. That should be here soon. And I had a mask on the back of the seat. Instead of a carbon fiber decal, I wanted to use something fun. So I used this uh, sticker bomb pattern that I probably will not use on anything else. So I wanted to have fun with it. I wanted to have a little whimsy. This is something for like a teenager or young adults uh, playroom. Uh, even or even an advanced adults playroom but uh, it's not going to be something in your tuner civic or your nismo gtr so you know, have fun with it make it your own so i'm making this my own with these uh these decals use your micro set and micro saw to uh, help the decal to adhere to the different contours of the seat work with it this material is actually really thick um, a lot thicker than I expected it to be but uh, if you work with it you're patient you uh, keep using your micro set and microsol um, after after it dries a little bit uh, it'll it'll really conform to the different contours and you'll be able to trim back the excess pieces if necessary this one was a little bit bigger size-wise than I expected. It covered a little bit more area. So you can trim it back before it dries. Uh, if, if you're too late on that, you can actually uh, mask up what you just did and repaint over the edges for the seat and uh, just have some fun with it. Go from there. If you've ever had a gaming racing steering wheel or pedal setup, you'll know how awkward it can be if you don't have the right rig to put it on. So this part that I'm putting together right here is the bottom part where the pedal assembly goes. It's uh, what sits on there and angles it up so that you can have the right, the right uh, distance from your feet and the right angle 
to use them. It's uh, pretty straightforward, but uh, you just need to have a sharp eye and just keep at it until you get everything uh, 90 degrees and squared on. Now the seat is ready for the micro sole. It helps the decal form to the complex curves of the back of the seat. This is a very complex pattern and uh, very difficult for a lot of people to uh, get right on their racing seats. So you definitely want to make sure that you take your time, do some practice. If it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. Um, instead of buying 20, 20 model pieces so that you, or 20 model kits so that you can uh, recreate a perfect seat just uh, take your time and uh, expect to have some setbacks here and there and expect to have a uh, some do-overs if you need it to get the right look for the pedals and the steering wheel i'm using a panel line wash from tamaya just put it into the recesses let it dry and then uh, wipe away the excess semi-gloss clear rattle can from tamaya to protect the decal, to make the decal shiny and the seat flat, you mask the seat so that it retains its flat finish. Be careful when assembling the racing pedals. They uh, resist being held by tweezers. They like to fly out of the hand. Just uh, take your time and, and uh, keep a sharp eye on, on what you're doing. The upper structure below where the steering wheel setup goes is a uh, natural finish of metal so i'm achieving this look with uh, chrome silver paint pretty straightforward The racing steering wheel is one of the craziest parts of the build. It not only includes the steering wheel itself, which I painted with a blue racing stripe at the top like a racing car would normally have or a Momo aftermarket steering wheel, but it has the photo etched metal piece that goes over the spokes. Over top of that is the centerpiece for your hub. And then behind the steering wheel are the racing shifter paddles. The finish that I went with was black, Although I had considered a carbon fiber look, they're so small, I don't think anybody would notice. So I went ahead and just kept them black and painted them so that they have an angled appearance from, or glued them so that they have an angle appearance from the steering wheel. For me, the funnest part of the build was not the decals, but the cup holder. I mounted that on the left-hand side since in the United States, we have a left-hand oriented driver position which means your gear selector will be on the right hand side so I mounted the cup holder on the left side of the setup to be more of a natural uh, fit for an American driver once you get the steering wheel mounted with all the paddles and the center mount hub you're gonna to want to put that on the uh, game piece itself and so it just glues straight on there, not much fuss. I mounted it to the metal top and then 
mounted the top, the whole thing onto the uh, structure of the of the game chair. For final assembly, you're gonna want to mount the cup holder to the left hand side of the rig, the steering wheel and its mounting point on the top of the structure, the pedals in the lower part, the seat with its adjuster to the back, and of course the shifter to the right. The last thing I did was the decals. Uh, looking back on how where they actually went, one goes on the steering wheel hub, uh, there's some on the pedals. I put them on the back of the pedals instead of where the pedals actually were because if I was doing this all again I probably would have done the decals before final assembly. That would have just uh, been a more natural way to do it. These small decals are very hard to work with. Um, I fought with this for a long time but the magic of editing makes it look like they just popped off and then I put the piece onto the steering wheel. But yeah you're going to want to make sure that uh, when you work with this you take your time. You uh, make sure you're using uh, the micro set and the micro saw correctly because uh, once you get done with this, they're not moving. I do definitely recommend this build for an advanced modeler. GamePod GT2. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left. Gaming at its best. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my April Fool's Day episode, and uh, have a very great day. Whatever happened to the guys? Not again. Great. Now I'm going to have to come up with a you googly. <laughs>